Oh, hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now today we're taking a look at a GTX 780 that I found on eBay for just 20 British pounds on the account that it was 40. Now from the description the seller said that this card boots into the BIOS just fine as you can see behind me but it really won't go much further than that. Now the description didn't go into too much detail, all I know is that this is as far as this card can apparently get. So today, I wanted to see if this is true and whether or not we can fix this thing. But first, let's talk about why this thing may not be working as it should. As you can see, it's a pretty dusty example of a 780 and dust can play a bigger part than you may think in terms of how a component works. There's also the fact that the seller may not have had a beefy enough power supply for one of these GPUs. And to counterbalance that, I've ensured that we're using an 850 watt one, as you can see in our test system here. Now my personal test rig has changed a bit since you last saw it, but it basically features the same Ryzen 5 1600 at stock speeds, eight gigs of 3000 megahertz memory, and usually a GTX 1070. Though in this case, we've got the 780 installed. So the first thing we're going to do here is clean it up. It's actually still very dusty as it sits in my system here and that's something I regret doing because now the dust is everywhere. This thing was absolutely caked but let's give it a clean up and then try and boot into Windows see what happens. Oh I almost forgot let's talk specs. This is the Palette Jetstream 3GIG 780. It launched back in 2013 and is based on the Kepler architecture, which means it supports the latest DirectX 12 API. It has a 902MHz clock speed, 954MHz boost clock speed, and 2304 CUDA cores or shading units. With a 250 watt TDP, this old beast requires an additional 6 pin and 8 pin power connector and you'd be best off using a power supply with at least 600 watts on offer. Over the last couple of years, performance of older top tier Kepler cars like this have been known to underwhelm in comparison to their AMD counterparts, maybe because of better driver support from Team Red. Regardless, this video isn't centered too much on performance because we've got to get it working first of all. The best thing to do here was take it apart, assess the situation and spend an hour or so removing five years worth of grime. The back of this has never been removed as far as I can tell because the original sticker that protected one of the screws was still in place. I've skipped over the cleaning process because although it can be quite relaxing or calming to watch, I've shown you many times before. A good while later and the card was ready to be reassembled. Taking apart a graphics card is always relatively simple and consists of just removing screws until the heatsink comes off. We've also given the thermals a quick improvement by replacing the now crispy old paste with some Arctic MX2. After slapping it back into the system and checking that it still worked, we were ready to see what the problem was. Evidently, it was clear that Windows didn't recognise it straight off the bat. Usually when I restart a system with a new GPU installed, Windows 10 will detect it after about 20 seconds and update the device manager. This simply wasn't the case here. Refreshing and clicking scan for hardware changes made no difference either, but it was a desperate grab at hope. With that in mind, I headed on over to Guru 3D and decided to try a completely clean installation, removing everything using DDU or Display Driver Uninstaller. This is an excellent free program that completely removes any lingering old driver components that may be lurking somewhere on your hard drive. I didn't think this would work to be honest and while it did succeed in uninstalling the remnants of my old drivers, attempting a fresh installation from Nvidia's site of the 780 drivers yielded this result, a black screen. This was the same across five different driver versions I tested, after uninstalling then reinstalling them one after the other. So what were the options? Well, I needed to try and flash the BIOS of the 780. Flashing a BIOS basically means downloading and reinstalling your graphics cards on board software. Changing a BIOS can sometimes mean better overclocking ability for certain cards, better general stability and maybe even the answer to all of your black screen issues. So as I'm sure most of you know the Ryzen 5 1600 has no onboard graphics and this was going to be a problem for the next part. You see I needed to get into Windows 10 so that I could download all the appropriate programs in order to flash the 780 but the 780 still had to be part of the system. 
Enter then this. This is a mini ITX motherboard combo I picked up on eBay the other day and originally had no part to play in this video. It does however feature an i5-3450 which, as I'm sure most of you will know, has Intel HD graphics built in. This then meant that I could connect my system up to my monitor using the Intel onboard graphics and still have the 780 sitting in the PCI Express slot so that it was ready to be flashed. All I had to do was go into the motherboard BIOS, change the primary display to the onboard graphics and I could then get back into Windows and see exactly what I was doing. Now I know the PC knows that the 780 exists because the Nvidia installer does detect it, it just black screens after installing any drivers. By some miracle device manager detected the card this time round. Could this be it? Well it was certainly progress. The download bar finished and the 780 was installed but thanks to the Intel HD graphics acting as the primary output, the system didn't crash. Before doing anything else I quickly started looking for a BIOS flashing guide and found this excellent one on overclock.net. Now I wish I had documented the entirety of this process but to be completely honest I thought I had made a little mistake and I sort of muddled my way through it only to realise everything worked out okay. If you've never done it before it can be quite complicated but as long as you read the guide properly and thoroughly everything should turn out. Basically. This process involves creating a bootable DOS USB drive containing either ATI flash for AMD graphics cards or NV flash for Nvidia cards. You then put the BIOS for your graphics card, the one that can be downloaded from Tech Power Up on the same USB and in the same folder. Restarting the PC with the USB plugged in and booting into the USB drive is then the next step. I then followed the guide from here. It's basically just boot to the USB drive, run NV flash or ATI flash depending on your GPU and then select the BIOS name. You can then turn the PC off with the power button, reattach the monitor's display cable to the GPU and with any luck you should be good to restart. I'm still very much a first timer, well second timer when it comes to flashing graphics cards, so I'm going to do it a few more times before making a proper how to guide because I don't want to get anything wrong. This guide here though tells you everything you need to know, but did it work? Well here we are back on the Ryzen 5 system and as you can see the 780 is installed just fine as our primary adapter. I wanted to ease it back into the world of the living so I tested just a few games and didn't really pay too much attention to performance this time round. So there are no exact performance metrics on screen. I'll probably do that for a different video because I want to talk more in depth about this architecture and how it performs in 2019. This time stability was the focus and I have to say a couple of hours of gaming didn't phase our newly revived GTX. I did keep an eye on temperatures too though and with an idle temp of 31 degrees and a low temp of 63, the card was doing pretty well. It's a cold wintry day here in England, my room's like an ice age cave, and the PC side panel is off, so that may have helped. Although not my main focus, I can't help but touch on performance ever so slightly. These days it'll offer you about 20% on top of a 1050 Ti, so it's not too bad if you can find one at a decent price, but an AMD equivalent like an R9 290 for example, or what was equivalent back in the day, will now give you better performance thanks to better driver optimizations, or so I've heard. Bear that in mind as well. For £20 though, or $25, or €23, Euros, and a day's work repair-wise, I'm just happy that this is apparently working again. The real test is long term of course, so I'm going to run it in my PC for a week or two and then update you. I'll be keeping my eye on game performance, power consumption and stability, so stay tuned for that. In the meantime, let's finish off with a couple more games. My only guess as to what happened with this card is that perhaps someone had tried to flash it beforehand and then encountered this issue, or perhaps tried to install some sort of custom BIOS on it to try and get better performance from the GPU itself. I'm not really sure, all I know is that this apparently worked, so that's good, but this may not necessarily always be the case with every graphics card, each fault will always be different. So all that's left to say for this video is thank you for watching, I'm very surprised uh, in some aspects this works. As always when we do these sort of broken hardware videos it's never a good idea to go out hunting for particular uh, broken components because there isn't always a guarantee you're going to get them fixed and even if you do there's no guarantee as to how long they're going to last. 
Basically, what I'm saying is this is always for entertainment purposes. It was hardly a proper guide, but I hope you've enjoyed it nonetheless, because I certainly have fun picking up these old components and uh, seeing if we can bring life back into them. I'm not trying to be a total fun sponge. I'm just saying, you know, if you do want to do this, it's entirely up to you what you do with your money. But go into it knowing that there isn't always going to be a successful outcome. Thank you though for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it. If you didn't, leave a dislike. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.